So thank you all for coming this morning. My name is Margot Saulnier and I'm the creative strategist for the city of New Bedford. And we're here for an exciting announcement of creative placemaking grants through the city's Wicked Cool Places grant program. And today is also a special day because it's the sixth annual Arts Matter Day being celebrated throughout Massachusetts. And here in New Bedford, we believe that arts matter. They connect our communities, enhance our education, support a more creative workforce and a thriving economy, and create healthy and happy people. I'd like to take a moment to review how we got here. In December 2018, Mayor John Mitchell announced the publication of the city's first strategic arts and culture plan called New Bedford Creative. The plan's intention is to enhance community development, arts entrepreneurship, and create an ongoing investment in the city's arts and culture. Since then, a consortium of 27 individuals called New Bedford Creative have begun leading the way implementing that plan. I'd like to give a special shout out and thank all of them, many who are here today in this room, for their dedication and commitment to the people who live and visit our city. Within the, yes, yes. thank you. So within the past year, New Bedford Creative has launched the city's first arts and culture website called newbedfordcreative.org. They've partnered with the city to begin updating the special events permit application and creating a special events policy. They've started researching public art programs to, with the goal of creating the city's first public art policy. And why we are here today, they've overseen the outreach, scoring, and selection of Wicked Cool Places grants. We would not be here today without the leadership of Mayor Mitchell and the New Bedford City Council, who made history in 2016 passing legislation to create the first arts, culture, and tourism fund in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It's thank you. It's my honor and privilege to introduce a true partner to the creative community, someone who exemplifies why arts matter, who is making a difference for all residents and visitors, New Bedford Mayor John Mitchell. Thanks, Mark. Thank wow. So we needed a bigger room. So uh, uh, here's the other, here's the other uh, feedback I give. So, so as I look around the room, um, I think, you know, this, is, this should be a party. We should be, uh, we should be, yeah, so it's, it's only 11 o'clock, maybe we should just move it to 4 o'clock, you know, but, uh, uh, but it's great to, great to see everybody uh, here today. This is, a, this is a really fun event, and, um, you know, one of the things that strikes me about the, the work, there are a number of things to talk about, um, you know, I, I, at, the, at the risk of uh, preaching to the converted, it, what we're doing in um, in our efforts to promote the arts, to cultivate um, a, uh, an artistic ecosystem in, in the city is really, a, um, I think, a model for public and private collaboration. Like everybody gets in the room, everybody feels good about the work we're doing, or we're all working together, we all have common ends, like a common general end. We want to continue to put New Bedford on the map uh, as a place where arts not only matter, but where they thrive. Um, and it does require public and private collaboration um, at every step of the way. And it's, that's, you know, doing that isn't easy. It's really, in lots of places, try and fail at it. But, you know, we, um, you know we've got such a fabulous group, both on the city side, as well as at uh, the EDC and the nonprofit sectors and among all the, uh, the artists in the city that, um, you know, everybody sort of puts aside differences and, and uh, 
and, uh, and makes it happen. So I just really want to thank uh, all of you for, uh, yeah, for, that, for that work. Um, you know, we continue to make our mark. Um, it's, you know, I, I just look, I'm looking at your shirt right now. So, <laughs> so, so uh, the creative courts, right? So I, I, um, I get three newspapers in the morning. I get the Standard Times, I get the Boston Globe, I get the Wall Street Journal. And the picture, uh, Pete Pereira's picture, of um, the new courts on, um, uh, over at Klasky Common appeared in two of my newspapers one day, the Standard Times and the Wall Street Journal. Same picture, same photographer, right? So, uh, you know, it's a, it is a mark uh, of the work that, um, that we're doing. And Bedford is being, being recognized. You know, we did have the, the real breakthrough with the, you know, the creation of the arts uh, fund uh, a few years ago when I announced it at my State of the City address, and then it, that led to Margo, and that led to the cultural plan, um, and it led to just, you know, our, what our, our goal was, was to, you know, throw some gasoline on uh, a fire that was already, had already been lit, and that, so uh, it's up to us really to, to keep it going, and, and think big, think ambitiously, think most of all uh, creatively. And so, um, you know, this is just another big step in the way. What, what is really, I think, um, uh, I, I think gratifying to see is that, you know, the grants that have been given out through a number of sources, right, so that, uh, including, including the ones that we were talking about today, uh, have leveraged a, a, a fair amount of work, uh, have leveraged a fair amount of other investment. Uh, so, you know, on paper, each one of these grants, it's not huge money, but it's not huge money that's that's required. It's some money, just enough, just enough. It's enough money uh, to uh, to see further effort, to see further investment. And so, we want to keep all this going. Right? So I just a lot of folks I, I want to thank on the city side, uh, you know, Tabitha and her team on the EDC side. You know, Derek and his team and the board, uh, the Community Foundation, uh, John's here from the Community Foundation. Uh, they've, they've been very supportive of uh, the collective efforts here. I want to thank the consortium for um, you know for, for picking some great uh, some great projects and for the work that you continue to do and um, and I want to thank Margo uh, for um, allowing us to rope her back to New Bedford uh, first of all which was uh, which was a big coup and for all the you know the uh, the spearheading of these efforts that you, you do all the time um, it's a lot of great work guys and um, uh, and uh, let's let's keep it going. There's a lot of big things uh, in the years ahead. Thanks. Um, it's my pleasure to announce the president of the Community Foundation of Southeastern Massachusetts who is also a board member of New Bedford Economic Development Council and a champion for the arts, John Vasconcellos. You, well, you dress well in there. <laughs> I, uh, I said to myself, as I peered into my closet, I said, what would John wear today? That's right. <laughs> I wonder if I, like, what would the mayor not really, wear today? I came really, really close. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Margo, and thank you, Mayor. It is an absolute honor to be here, and I actually, I always want to stop and sort of take, uh, take, uh, take stock of sort of where we are, and if you look behind you, and this demonstrates the city's commitment to art, Helen Granger's piece is uh, an, a, an artist from Hatch Street Studios has uh, enhanced the experience here at the City Hall by having some of her pieces, and I think they're wonderful, particularly in this uh, environment. So here, here. So New Bedford is unmistakably the arts and cultural center for southeastern Massachusetts. Our city boasts a wide array of attractions, diverse venues, artists, and performers that showcase the cultural fabric of our distinctive identity and vibrancy. This vibrancy can often be difficult to measure as with more traditional economic development activities, but, as we, uh, but we all know it, we feel it, and we see it. And when visitors or potential investors come to the city to meet with the mayor or Derek at the Economic Development Council, we know our arts and culture scene is a compelling selling point. 
And for those of us who have long considered New Bedford home, it is also why we think it is a wicked cool place. It would absolutely be at our peril if we were to take our cultural assets for granted or to forget that they have a significant impact on our local economy when our need to invest in them is essential. While I am very proud to be here on behalf of the Economic Development Council, I'm also proud that during my day job of building private philanthropy that I can be a partner in this effort. But consider, the Zyterian Performing Arts Center serves 100,000 patrons and can measure a $5.2 million impact on our local economy. The Whaling Museum and National Park see more than 200,000 visitors annually while supporting so many of our great downtown restaurants and retail shops. Dozens of events from AHA to the Feast of the Blessed Sacrament bring in thousands more throughout the year. And Buttonwood Park Zoo is visited more than 150,000 times by families from the region and beyond. It is this economic impact, as well as our awareness that a vibrant city, vibrant culture is a key attraction for investment in our city. People want to live in a city with a vibrant arts and culture scene. This is precisely why the New Bedford Economic Development Council over the past 10 years has been involved in the creative economy and why we have the confidence to say that the next 10 years are just not to be believed they will be that exciting. So a key component of this work is our placemaking program, Wicked Cool Places. We all know there are a lot of wicked cool places in New Bedford, and they are each distinctively animated by elements that encourage human interaction, creativity, expression, self-awareness, and joy. From activities such as festivals or temporary outdoor sculpture to more permanent works such as murals or light installations. Over the past 12 months, New Bedford Creative has awarded $132,000 to 25 projects that have changed and improved our lives and our neighborhoods throughout the city. This investment has leveraged an additional 460,000 for the good of our city. So, let's give away some money. <laughs> right, that's why you're all here. Like money, 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 why is he still talking? <laughs> so I get the very fun job of announcing 13 city changing projects. First of all, South Coast LGBTQ Network is encouraging everyone to show your pride during June National Pride Month with their Pride Art Expo at Gallery X and Art in the Park, their fourth annual all-inclusive South Coast Pride community event in Buttonwood Park. And this grant is for $2,000. In June 2019, AHA hosted its first ever Pride themed event in conjunction with LGBTQ Pride Month and in 2020, they will continue with this theme, recognizing and celebrating the contributions of LGBTQ people in the city historically and in our present day. And this is like gayer than the Tonys. <laughs> this grant is for $2,700. Our third grant is to the Community Economic Development Center for the Festival Tipico de Guatemala, a day-long celebration of Central American arts and culture featuring performances of traditional Mayan marimba music, contemporary Guatemalan music and folkloric dance, plus craft demonstrations, traditional kite making and flying, and activities for children. This grant is for $3,000. Musician Jeff Angley and South Coast Lessons is expanding its very successful New Bedford public programming from a three-month open season series to a six-month program that includes monthly events for traditional string band instrumentalists and ukuleles. This grant is for $4,500. one of the many new kids on the block, Super Flat New Bedford. We'll create a postcard style mural across the street from the Greater New Bedford Community Health Center. The words New Bedford will be depicted in graphic lettering with each letter containing an eclectic mix of imagery painted by a range of local artists. 
This grant is for $5,000. Our next grant for Beatrice Oliveira on behalf of Hatch Street Studios Fall and Spring Open Studios and Arts Blog. Located in the city's north end, Hatch Street Studios is a vibrant creative hub for more than 65 visual and performing artists. Today, these artists create an array of diverse works and mediums that include painting, drawing, sculpture, fine furniture making, jewelry, fiber art, photography, and various types of performance from music to aerial arts. This grant is for $5,000. <laughs> Our seventh grant is in uh, acknowledges New Bedford Festival, uh, New Bedford Folk Festival, which in 2020 will celebrate its 25th anniversary. Presented and produced by the Zyterian Performing Arts Center, this two-day festival features seven stages of nearly 100 folk artists and more than 70 craft vendors juried by festival staff. Thousands of people attend each year, and while some stages are ticketed, most of the festival is absolutely free and open to the general public. This grant is also for $5,000. This one is near and dear to my heart. Uh, artist Alex Jardin for the Haskell Jardin Garden and Sculpture, a green space making project at the Allen C. Haskell Public Gardens. Owned and maintained by the Trustees of Reservations, the project explores the merging of landscape design as contemporary fine art. And the installation acts as a metaphor for the jewel of a green space within a dynamic, maritime-rich, coastal urban environment. This grant is for $5,000. <laughs> and we love when business partners get involved. Fiber Optic Center will create a jazz wall mural and host a series of outdoor concerts as part of a variety of street events. The mural will be created in a partnership with Superflat using local artists placed on the five-story east-facing wall at 23 Center Street, where live music is currently performed on summer AHA nights. The mural will, will depict New Bedford musicians who have achieved local and national prominence as musicians, composers, mentors, and teachers, including Paul Gonzalez, Rick Brito, Herbie King, Armistead Christian, Bobby Green, Jolie Gonzalez, and Frank Chico Montero. This grant is for $7,000. And I'm really sorry, I don't think Brooke Baptiste is here. A total local rock star, but her reggae on West Beach is the next Woo! grant recipient. This is a free community event that is inclusive multi-generational, welcoming, and family-friendly, celebrating the many styles of reggae, world music, and so much more. The event takes place at the city's West Beach Pavilion in the South End on Sundays throughout the summer from 3 p.m. to 7 and features food trucks, local vendors, and kids' activities. This grant is for $8,000. <laughs> And another new exciting kid on the block, Coastal Food Shed. They celebrate the marriage of local food and art each month throughout the winter season at their new indoor New Bedford Market, Farmer's Market at the Unitarian Church on Union and County. This year, they will be hosting Palette to Palette, Art at the Farmer's Market. This free event will transform the market into an edible canvas Using ingredients from the vendors as the medium, a local artist will create an edible canvas, working with the public to build upon their own palettes. This grant is for $8,500. Longtime favorite of many of ours, Third Eye Youth Empowerment. For their Third Eye Open, a youth-oriented and family-friendly annual cultural arts festival focusing on the pos positive energy of hip-hop and the Third Eye on the Pride, a monthly performance and mentoring opportunity for emerging young performers. This grant is for $11,300. And the mayor's intuition is spot on. 
And Ashley's placement is spot on because our last and final grantee is the New Bedford Arts Museum and, uh, Art Museum and Artworks for Creative Courts. Creative Courts, building on the wonderful success at Classy Common, will be revitalizing the public basketball court at Carlos Pacheco Elementary School. This transformative art mural style court project is led by artist uh, Maria Moltini, who will engage with the local community to create an impactful design that celebrates basketball's broad appeal and elevates the democratic nature of a public court. The location of the piece coincides with programs and efforts offered by Pacheco School and the city of New Bedford in this surrounding neighborhood, which includes Presidential Heights and brick and wood housing. This final grant from Wicked Cool Places is for $15,000. <laughs> So I'm only the lucky one that gets to stand up here and say, give these out. I actually did very little to make it happen. So I really want to acknowledge the mayor's leadership on this, the city council's leadership, Margo, Derek, the staff of the Economic Development Council, and especially the Arts Consortium, the volunteers who came together to really move this to the next level. So congratulate yourselves. You guys, you blow the rest of the state away. <laughs> So this is a significant investment in our city and by our city. We know where these funds come from. And it's a celebration and elevation of what makes our home unlike anywhere else. Congratulations to you all. Please, we ask the recipients to stay behind so we can do a group photo. And thank you all for coming today, and we hope you have a wicked cool weekend. <laughs>